Hi everyone and welcome to module 1G of my Python full course for beginners. If you've not enrolled already, please subscribe to the channel and let's get started. So last time we talked about the idea of variables in module 1F, where we said, okay, let's call this thing index and set it equal to 1 at first. So if we print index there, well, it's going to be 1. But then it's variable, meaning that you can change the value of that. So let's actually change it to 2. And then you print index again, then that value would be 2. And there's no reason for it not to change type as well. So you can change not only the value of this thing, it is an integer, change it to an integer, but you can also say, actually, I want index to be the string of hey. And then if I ask what index is there, then it is now hey, it is a string. So now that we have this idea of variables, we can do many, many powerful things. But first of all, before we do that, I'm going to step into let's call it basic arithmetic. So say that we did have a variable and we set it equal to num is equal to one. Well, in again, logically, we have the idea of one plus one equals two. So we should have that if num is one, then num plus one is two. And that is still an integer. If you ask the type of this thing, then that is still going to be an integer. If you take num, which is an integer, and add a decimal point value or a float, well, then that is going to be a float. Num, the integer of 1 plus a float of 1.3 should be the float or decimal point value of 2.3. So this is the idea of basic arithmetic, like adding, subtraction. I'm not going to show all of these things, but essentially we could do num plus 1.3, that would be 2.3 num minus 0 0.3, that's going to equal 1 point, sorry, that's a plus still, num minus 0 0.3 is 0 0.7, and we could do multiplication, so num times, let's stick something simple here, num times 2, that is going to be 2, and notice the type of this thing is, what is it, 1 times 2, well that is still an integer. If you did 1 times 2.5, it is now a floating point value, even if it was something that makes kind of a whole number, like, sorry, 3.0, it's still a floating point value, so it's going to be 3.0. So we have multiplication, you could do division, where we have num divided by 3 is equal to, sorry, that's a, that's a type of that is a float, but we have num divided by 3, that is the float of 0 0.33. There is also the concept of integer division, which I'm not going to talk too much about, but if we have one and we do two slashes, that is divide this by the integer three, doing integer division, this is saying what is the actual number of times that three goes into one? Well, three goes into one zero times, and so it's going to produce zero. If we instead set num equal to three, and we ask how many times does this three go into 3, well, that should be 1. How many times does 3 go into 4? Well, it's still going to be 1, but we have a different remainder. And to get that remainder, you can do what's called mod, which is actually the percentage sign, which says, do this integer division, but then give me the remainder rather than how many times it actually goes into that value. So if we have 4 mod 3, then it's 1, because not because 3 goes into 4, one time, although it does, it goes into th four one time with remainder one. And I can show you that it's different by saying num equals five, num mod three is equal to two. It goes into five once with remainder two. So this gives rise to the idea of changing variables. So we can do simple stuff like mod, division, remainder, as I said, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, all of those types of things. You can also do exponents if you want. I'm not going to go over all of them. Two exponent, exponent, or asterisk, asterisk, 10. That's saying 2 to the 10 is 1024. Something a little more simple is 2 to the 3 is 8. Okay, 2 to the 8. There's a lot of these types of things. And now with variables, we're going to want to see that the idea of adding 1 to an integer and maybe subtracting 1 is very useful. Because if I go back to our module here in variables, where I have, okay, set index equal to 1, then set it equal to 2. Well, what we can do is set, say, a equal to 1, and then do a plus equals 1. So what that's doing 
is saying, and it knows it doesn't actually return anything there, it doesn't print anything. If I do print a, then what it's saying is set a equal to one. Now plus equals is saying whatever a was before, make it make a that plus one. And this is exactly the same way as saying a is equal to a plus one. It means literally the same thing. It's just a faster way to write it. So that again, that is equal to two. And the point of why this is going to be useful, which I'm going to talk about in the next video, is the idea of this thing increasing in value. If we have an integer increasing in value, maybe we had the list of one, two, three again. So then if we set a equal to zero, well, then we could ask this thing sub a is going to be, and actually let me just print all of them so that you can see all of them at once. So first we print one, two, three sub a, well, a is zero, so it's gonna print one. But then if I actually increment a, I set a plus equals one, now it's going to be the value of one. So if I copy the same thing and paste it, I get actually gonna be this value this time because a is set equal to one now. And if I do both of these things again, if I add one to a, so now it's gonna be the value of two, and now if I have this thing sub two, then it is going to print the third value, which is three. So here we are going to do this in a loop next time in what's called a while loop. I will see you there.